Okay, here we are on podcast number 12. We just did 11 about 10 minutes ago, but we're on number 12. And this is just, I, I, this is one of the most exciting things in the world where Jocelyn Sokol, Jocelyn's to my right, your left, and I, who actually operate JS Life Coaching Team and work with a load of clients around the country and who happen to be right now in the midst of the big game, COVID-19, going through a tremendous amount of challenges. So it was our idea, concept, mostly Jocelyn's, she's the brain of the outfit, brains the outfit, said, why don't we do podcasts with people and find out how they're doing? And most of all, what they're doing within it and how are they getting better? So today we have two incredible guests and I'll move downstairs first on my, on my picture, the, uh, the really attractive man with the glasses is a former student of mine, former athlete who played football at Ridgewood High School, happened to be just a, one of 20,000 students. However, he's in California, number one. He's one of the greatest dads that ever lived, number two. And number three, of all the students we've ever had, Danny's in my top three. And he's in my top three for one reason, which will divulge in a second. Diagonally is this gorgeous female, uh, the great, I mean, incredible, Debbie O'Connell. And Debbie, uh, if you grew up in Ridgewood, you watched one of the finest athletes in the history of this town play. And she is a multi-sport athlete, an incredible softball player even better all-American basketball player. And then I don't even want to mention it, but bowling, she comes from like the bowling gurus in the world. So Deb is an incredible athlete, but more importantly, being an athlete, she's a coach. And she speaks nationwide to businesses, corporations, works with professional athletes, and she's a professional golf coach. So it's like a myriad, it's a soup of like, like golden treasures here. So I can't wait to get to the bottom of this. Jocelyn, take it and run with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, during this time, um, you know, a lot of our clients, um, issues that they've had have been magnified or, you know, strengths that they have have been magnified during this time. So what would you say have been your biggest challenges for each of you? Um, why don't we start with you, Debbie? I would say at first when the COVID-19 came about, I mean, my schedule changed. I was teaching two local high schools, Ridgewood High School, Mawa High School, golf. I had corporate golf outings set up where I'm the keynote speaker and I run the corporate outing. I had those dates to look forward to. I have, um, I'm the co-site director for a girls golf program that is supposed to start next week. It's an outdoor program. And I'm also the lead professional for the LPGA Leadership Academy. And four of those set up that I would travel to and we would spend two days inspiring and motivating young girls and helping them to be empowered and become the leaders that they already are, but we help them bring it out in themselves. So I, all those things scheduled and looking forward to, part of them already started, part of them to look forward to. So the schedule changed, you know, and I think for everybody, we had a blueprint of 2020. If you're anything like Coach, Coach Stroker, if you're anything like him, you've planned 2020. You had goals, you had dreams, you, you were all set to move forward in that. And now that blueprint yeah. is gone away. Yeah. Yeah. So there's the challenges. And then it's a matter of creating a new blueprint. Yeah. Dan? Well, I, just background. So, you know, I'm, I'm a librarian for the county. So nine to five type of thing. But yeah, we, like Debbie said, we, we had a blueprint. Summer reading, anyone with kids. Every public library in the country does this. That's been scrapped. We're doing a really modified online version for people to log in and do their summer reading. I had programming for adults as I'm the adult services librarian. I had programming going out to October, scrapped. We're not gonna have anyone, any big programming or people in the library, well, people in the library, but no big social interaction programs at least until August 1st. 
so yeah, we had to really, uh, we're, we've been scrambling. I mean, we're, we're working at home. Fortunately, we can do that, but a lot of training, online training, a lot of uh, materials, books to buy. Uh, and then personally, yeah, uh, couldn't have come at a worse time for me as I've spoken with coach last couple of months, started working out, trying to get in shape again. And there goes the gym at our complex shut down. So yeah. No yeah. excuses. We're getting around that. We're working around it in terms of work. We're working around it personally. But yeah, I uh, yeah. agree with you 100 percent. The schedule just upheaval and about for one or two weeks, it took me a while to get my bald head around this thing. Yeah. So the neat part, I mean, this just I mean, it's got for anybody who is an athlete like Jocelyn or, or Debbie or, or Dan, like if you're an athlete, there's something about this situation that makes you scratch your head. You're like, no, wait a minute. I, I think I can connect the dots. I've been a, a lifetime athlete, and all you do is practice. You practice, 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 practice. And if you practice a lot, if you really do the discipline hard work, then when the game comes, you're like, yay, get the play. I was a horrible student. I never practiced my homework. So when the test came, I was hiding in the corner. But if you practice life skills day in and day out, now when the big game comes, here it comes. You're put into a restrictive state and told you can't do it. This should be a time where us athletes go, we smell like, oh, I've been here before. Step up in the clutch and do it. So, Deb, do you, does that resonate with you as a, as a coach? Absolutely, 100%. This is the time that people who are leaders want to step up. They don't want to go hide. They're like, oh my, there's a crisis. Let me step in and help people. And, you know, when things are going well, you know, leaders are important, and, but they can have other people help them lead and, you know, they're not as challenged. But what you said, I think, was the key for the leaders who are stepping up is the preparation. Because for me, I have the ability to change my emotional state into a positive peak performing state very quickly. So when I'll, I'll get down and, and I've been through some sad times, you know, part of, part of the challenge for me was we couldn't go visit my mother-in-law in rehab. And then eventually we would go window visits. So you find a way that's, that's what you do when you're an athlete and you're down, you figure out how can we come back? How can we still win this game? We found a way we'd go to her window and get her on the phone and we'd wave to her and we'd be able to look at her and talk. And then, you know, I've had the sad stuff. I have a cousin fighting the disease and, and my mother-in-law ended up passing away of Corona, but you know, and, and you have to grieve in those situations, right? You gotta, you gotta get through that. But then the other times, step up and be that leader. And the training I've done on how to take charge of my emotional state of when I get down, I can decide, do I wanna stay down there? Or do I wanna step up? Because I know when I'm in peak state, not only do I uplift myself, but now I'm in the ability to lift everyone else around me. When I think in solutions, I will find more opportunities. So it's how you think, and that's the training you're talking about. And if you've been a lifelong student of success strategies and, and achievement and goals and positive thinking and mindset, then you've been training all along for this situation to, to come along or the other challenges that we all come through in life, but you're ready and you're prepared to Love think it. your way in, in a positive with vision and how will I get through in a positive thinking manner and take charge of your emotional state and know that you're in charge of you and you have control, more control of the outcome than some others who don't take charge of that. Love it. Beautiful. Yeah. Love it. Um, and Dan, what do you think of listening to uh, Jim's words? I agree 100% with what he had to say. And I think what, what we, as an athlete, what you, what you learn is that you have to be able to adjust and be able to find a way. Like I, like I had said earlier, you know, with work, we, we, we've done Zoom, we're, like we're doing right now, uh, meetings. You, you just find solutions to problems. You, you can't just... And again, uh, my condolences, Debbie, I didn't realize about your mother-in-law. Again, I don't want to make light of the situation. I know sometimes my family thinks I don't have a lot of sympathy with this, but 
you, you've, you've got to carry on. Like Debbie said, there's a time to grieve and then you have to keep, you can't just, uh, we're not stopping here, especially athletic people, leaders. We, you've got to find a way to keep going and it's got to come from within you to do that and uh, find a way to get the other people on board with you and uh, do it in a positive way. That's, that's the hard, that was the hard part for me for the first couple of weeks is that I, I readily admit that I won't say I was angry, but I was, I was coach stroker scratching my head for two weeks, just like, wah, and then got that routine again. So, and, and what would you say in your past life experiences had helped both of you, you know, be able to, to adopt this mindset? Um, you know, there's, a, there's the learning of how to do it. Um, but to me, what's always the key is, is more being in a place where you want to look for a way to do it and then you'll find it. So what in your past experiences has, has prepared you for, for that? I, I'll start with that with the sports alone have, have done that for me. When I was in college, I was a starter at Western Kentucky University team. We had gone to the final four when I was a freshman, actually played, um, in the same final four as Cheryl Miller in her final year at USC and Tennessee and Texas was in there. Well, I became the starter on that team my junior year and I lost my starting position a little past halfway through the, through the jun my junior year. And then it was, the, you know, that fight to get that back. I, I was the team player. I was, I, I took the, the other role and did my best I could that summer. I worked very hard with a goal of getting that position back. And when I went back to school, I didn't have it right away, but I never gave up. And it was, it was always asking, how can I be a part of this team where I get that leadership role back? How can I make myself better to contribute to this team? And it was that fight to get back. So I did things like before class, I'd go to the arena by myself with a ball and I'd practice. I would, I would swim for extra conditioning. I did whatever it took. And eventually I got my starting position back and I finished my senior year. But there was a time that I, I didn't play one minute in one of the games. And I was kind of deciding, heck, I'm a senior. Should I just go have fun? And, and, and go through the motions the rest of the year. I actually had that thought and I've never had that thought in my life, but it was, it was, I was working so hard and I kept getting knocked down and knocked down. And the next day I was in the arena practicing. I decided, mm -hmm. no, I'm going to give it my all. Yeah, and that's true. what happens now. People are feeling knocked down. People are, are, you know, things are happening. We don't know what everyone's going through out there. It could be financial. There could be kids whose parents are, are doctors and they're on the front lines and they're just worried about them. It's the uncertainty. You know, you see people on food lines, you, you see all this going on, but each of us is playing a part in the solution. Yep. Every one that. of us, whether it's staying home or staying safe with a mask or being a positive influence on others or lifting other people or dropping off toilet paper on someone's doorstep because you heard they didn't have any, yeah. you know, we can all be part of the solution. But it's, it's thinking in that way. It's thinking yeah. solution oriented and having faith. What is faith? It's a belief of a positive outcome. It's a belief that when we're finished with this and when we look back, you want to be able to look back and say, who was I in that? Who, how did I step up? How did I react in that situation? As we're talking about this a year from now or five years from now, who were you in COVID? Think about that and then step up and be the person you want to talk about. Love it. Beautiful. Hey, Dan, I want to, I want to uh, unpack one little reason why you're here. Um, and I'll just quick the story. But when Jake and Allie were injured uh, that day, I was writing on the blackboard a definition. And the definition, it was because we were starting the drug and alcohol unit, I wanted to have some go-to message of like, whatever you decide, try to stay with that commitment. And the definition I put up on the blackboard was one that a lot of people wrote down and some people remembered. But now, I'm trying to, how many years has it been since you were in eight, ninth grade? <laughs> 39. So 39. 39 years later, that definition that I was writing that day has still stuck with you for a reason. And maybe you could tell the audience what the definition was and why it resonated with you and how it's impacted your life. Well, we'll start with the word. The word is character. And you were defining that for us. 
the definition is the ability to persist against constant opposition. And as I said earlier, the, the opposition is not really defined, obviously, when you were teaching us drugs, peer pressure, alcohol, and the, the ability to say no to those things. But in this case, what we're going through now is opposition. And we've got to be able to persist and move forward. And I and to your question about why it's stuck with me and resonated is because uh, the impact you and two other men in my life had, my father and my stepdad. I, I saw these men work 40 years and could count on one hand the number of days they missed due to sick time. Now, praise God or your faith that they weren't like that, but you just, you went to work, you did your job, you went in, you did your job. That was, that was it. You know, maybe you tried to advance or whatever, but you did your job. And, and I think in your case, it was the fact that seventh grade, eighth grade, there was that core of us, four or five guys that were in the weight room every morning with you, 6 a.m. I can even remember one time, for those of you watching who may not know Ridgewood, Ridgewood School District, we never took a snow day. You just, we got two a year, but nobody ever called it out. Well, I forget what year it was. It was like ninth, 10th grade, and we were still going to work out with Coach Stroker. And we show up at 6 o'clock. It was me, George Williams, and I think Chris Wojohowicz. We get into the weight room at six. It had been snowing. It, it was up to our knees. The plows didn't get out. They called it. First snow day we had had in a decade at least. And Coach Stroger looks at all of us and we're like, we're already here. Let's work out. We can stay even longer. And go home. And it's just that work ethic has stuck with me. I've had a few other quotes, Vince Lombardi quotes you've shared over the years with me and others, but you just, you know, we were even talking Tuesday night, Woody Allen's famous quote, 80% of life is just showing up. Yeah. I mean, to what Debbie said, you know, how are you going to have a solution if you're not even present? And, you know, that. again, you, you, you're just going to hide. Ooh, that's not going to be too helpful at this point. You, you've got to have a solution, a plan, something. If nothing else, I feel hopefully uh, that, you know, people will get right spiritually, physically, mentally, maybe realize what their priorities are in life, you know, not to make light of it. We've all done it. I've done it. But, you know, maybe life isn't just sitting around binge watching Netflix every weekend, you know, maybe get off the yeah. couch. You know, my kids just interject. My kids. That's a great out. idea. Watching Netflix. That's terrific, Dan. We want to come back to that. But what a great idea. To what? What is it called? Net what? <laughs> no, I was going to say my kids challenged me five years ago to get off the couch. Ended up losing 60 pounds in six months. Ooh, wow. All right. So listen, we're going to go around the horn here. Jocelyn, you're first. What are the little tricks that you guys use when you feel a little off and you need to turn the switch on? Um, I know Debbie's got some real fun tricks. I have my tricks. Jocelyn's got stuff. This, this woman is as consistent as ever met. And I know she doesn't feel perfect all the time. So in like short little snippets, like you get about 20 seconds each, one of your favorite trigger uh, tools or tactics you use. So when you get off, what do you use to get yourself back feeling like yourself? Jocelyn, you have one? You know, what's coming up for me when you're saying it really is as, as cliche as it is, but gratitude. I mean, it really is what helps me and comes up for me always of, you know, this is what's going on, but you know, situations that could be so much worse and you know, what, what can you focus on right now? That's good. And, um, but that's really, that's really comes up for me. You know, you had said it, a long time ago, Jim, the best way to get rid of a problem is get a bigger problem. And that really resonated with me. And, and that is my, you know, sort of my go-to. Yeah. Now, now the next person, I love this thing she's going to do, I hope. But this just flips the, the, the switch. So give it to us, Deb. You bet. Use your body. First thing you do, just take a massive action. Whoa. Like, get your hands up. Get your body up. Boom. That will change your state in a second. You know, you can power pose. Stand like a superhero so you know you are your own superhero. Take charge of that. You will feel more confident and uplifted. And then I have programmed a move. Yes, that's my move. I make my move 
and that puts me in peak state. So the net, when you you put put a great song on, put something that makes you happy, and practice this move over and over, and program it. So if you're down, you make that move, bam, get in your power pose, use your body, change your state. Ah, you just Woo! changed my state. Oh my God. <laughs> Where, let's go. All right, Dan. Uh, I grab a bag of potatoes. No, no, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. I'm just kidding. No, I, I find uh, for me, it's getting out. I got, I got to move around. There are those times when you just, you know, uh, get out and walk. And then maybe if, if, if I've got enough in the tank, just run that whole endorphin kick in the runner's high. I know if Debbie, Debbie remembers or coach, uh, running in high school for me, I was not built to be a runner. But I'll tell you, there's something about the endorphins kicking in and just better attitude and you just feel better about yourself. Mm -hmm. So for me, you got to get outside. That's that's the thing. Get out, get away, get get the thoughts back together and refocus. Great. Yeah. Hey, how, so, how about you, Jim? Uh, it's usually a little Wim Hof breathing. <laughs> 30 breaths, 20 push-ups, a jump in the ice water, do a lot of a lot of polar bear swims, and just just move. Move, Jim. That really helps. So I'm not gonna steal your question. I want to do a real quickie and then Jocelyn will finish here. So what are you most proud of yourself for what you've done? You felt you've you've done during this challenge. Jocelyn, most proud. Uh, what I'm most proud of? Yeah. Um, I would say keeping, you know, a, 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 an energetic um, and positive mentality in the home. We have, you know, three kids, um, two are seniors, a senior in high school, a senior in college, or going to be a senior in college, um, and a 15-year-old. And, uh, you know, I just feel proud of that, um, you know, while it's not perfect by any stretch, I feel like everyone is coming together in a special way so so you've been that four step uh i guess I'm, I'm proud that one i have adapted you know i'm doing virtual golf clinics indoors i'm doing more even more online programs i did some before about you know mindset and positive thinking and and the mental game of life but um the other thing i'm really proud of is i've made people laugh i nice. i have i have uh, extended my, I did an in motion Monday and fun Friday before. Now I'm on seven days a week in the morning on Facebook at 8 30. And, and my goal is to help people have more joy in their life, put a smile on their face, give them a positive message, give them a, a focus that will uplift them through this time. And uh, on my fun Fridays, I, I mean, I have wigs, I dress up, I sing and dance, I do something that will hopefully make people laugh and enjoy themselves and and that i'm really proud of that because some, a lot of the feedback i'm getting is just that hey you set my day off right or you put a smile on my face and and that's what we need now when we smile we actually it's our own little happy drug that gets released in our it. in our body dan? and that i'm proud of well, i'm sorry that's great dan uh just just staying connected with people especially a lot of you back there uh you coach we've been talking a lot since we went back and visited in the winter christmas time Coach Johnson, just just reconnecting or or strengthening those relationships that are already there, realizing what's really important are the people. You know, the jobs may change, you may we all get older, retire, but it's really the relationships. And you know, yeah. again, Debbie touched on that with the humor part. For me, not really the humor guy, but you know, just maintaining those or just reconnecting and uh, strengthening those relationships with people. Yeah. I'll give you a quickie, then we'll finish with Jocelyn. Like what I told Jocelyn, when we were when we were in our heyday in our twenties, and we were, you know, trying to pick up some girls and bars and stuff. And you can imagine the lines that I had. I mean, it's like whoa! I had a lot of Steve Martin in me. I mean, I, I just had the moves. But the best line you ever I, we ever had was, "Hey, do you girls interested at all in doing commercials?" <laughs> and they would go, what? Really? And we'd all have different names and we'd set up these Charmin commercials. But but everyone said, yeah, you me, 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 me. So I'm most proud of these podcasts. I love them because first of all, everyone wants to be in a podcast. <laughs> hey, do you want to do a podcast? Yes. 
And then you get to look at three people in the eye who you love for a period of 45 minutes or an hour and connect quite honestly. Like, I haven't done that ever. I mean, I've been with people talking, but this is so special. And you get to make people feel good. You get to have fun. And then most of all, you get the treasures, those little inklings of gems that all three of you have that I get to just bring into my heart and carry with me. So that's what I'm most proud of. Jocelyn, I'm going to let you finish up last question or comment. Yeah, I mean, you know, just as, as devastating as COVID-19, you know, has been and is still continues to be for so many, um, you know, we are all thinking about the gifts that it's bringing us. So what would you say is something, a lesson or something new that you want to bring into your lives um, when this is over? That's uh, something new I want to bring in. Well, I, I want to continue to learn and grow. I, I, that is, that has been my life's journey and I am constantly, even I had a call today with a group of people and I just keep hearing these nuggets of, of gold. Like Jim says, it's there, it's the information that you can gain, the lesson you can learn from other people's stories. And, and I think that the most important thing is to be better than I was when COVID started some way, shape or form grow, be smarter, be deeper, you know, influence more people, bring more joy to others. Uh, you know, just continue to move forward. So when I look back, I can say I was that person then, but now I'm this person and it's, it's somewhere of growth. Love it. Love it. Dan? How do I follow that, Debbie? <laughs> it's just so positive. Yeah. I mean, who, who doesn't want to come out of this on the other side better? I mean, however that is, I mean, to go back to the beginning character, the ability to persist, to just come out better and not be worse or where you were whatever that means to you, whatever that, whatever it takes for you to do that, uh, just, just reach that, that point and come out of this on the, on the other side. Uh, for me as a librarian, I deal with the public, or I did deal with the public every day, five days a week. And, uh, you know, you, my wife always reminds me when I come home and have a few complaints, she goes, well, just remember you're on the other side of that when you, when you're the customer, you're the patron. She really always reminds me of that and uh, keeps me in line. And, you know, we, I've made some great relationships with the patrons and uh, that's, that's what I miss now. And, and hopefully going back, I will cherish them even more and, you know, just always to try and be a little bit more forgiving and just have more gratitude. I love it. So Jocelyn and I do a lot of meditation, coaching, we work with a lot of clients on trying to become more aware. And, the one thing I'm aware of is that the older you get, the wiser you get. And the more things you go through, the more you understand that life has to be put in perspective to get what they call a panoramic view. And one of the things that we do a lot of work with is what's in your control, what's out of your control. And obviously, COVID-19 is out of our control. But one thing that I know it's in my control at age 60, at age 68 is how many times a day I tell people I love you. How many times a day I tell someone I love you. Because if it was my last day on earth, I'd run around and tell everybody I love them. But I'm not going to wait. So, Dan, I love you forever. I can't thank you enough for what you've meant to me. Debbie, I love you forever. I can't thank you for everything you've done for me. And Jocelyn, I love you as well. And thank you so much for everything you've done for me. So this has been really cool. You guys are the best of the best. And hopefully soon we'll get a real hug. I don't know how when that's going to be. But anyway, stay safe. Thank you all so much for this great uh, meeting. And we'll end it here. We'll end the recording. Bye. Thank you, guys.